एन ऑरिजिन टॉपिक दैट कॉन्सोन ऑस ऑल मिस सुजडीए हैज एन एक्सटेंसिव करियर स्पैनिंग ओवर 25 इयर्स एज अ टीचर हेड ऑफ द पेडा पेडा जूजिकल सर्कल इन द हुसी एरिया एंड फाउंडर ऑफ द ग्लोबल एजुकेशन नेटवर्क मिस सुजडीए इज द मेंबर ऑफ द स्कूल्स बोर्ड ऑफ डायरेक्टर एंड द इवैल्यूएशन एंड क्वालिटी एश्योरेंस कमीशन रिस्पोंसिबल फॉर यूरोपियन एंड इंटरनेशनल प्रोजेक्ट इन द स्कूल she is also a coordinator of erasmus and e twinning europe project coordinator of peace ambassador and a founder of the icb project furthermore she is the global executive director of the global education or nato a country director at kids foundation the international youth society committee and the eco training center in sweden she is an author of educational books and numerous articles in national and international press a researcher a speaker and an initiator of international projects she will share our insights on a pressing matter that affects our planet the solution to will the solutions to global warming and reducing carbon emission please join me in welcoming mrs uh, corina susdie for our speech Thank you very much. Namaste to all of you. Um, uh, it's a pleasure to be today with uh, you all. Thank you, Dr. Rudra Prasad uh, Gimire, for this uh, invitation. And uh, as we know, we are here to talk about global warming effects, causes, and many more. I would like to share my screen now. and i hope uh, you can see my presentation so please if there will be a problem with uh, my presentation let me know yes just a moment because my mouse it's stuck on the slide maybe the internet connection is not very good but um kiss so i am back i hope you can see me and hear me clear clearly uh, maybe a problem of internet was there so i'm sharing my screen again so today i'm here to talk about global warming solutions how to reduce carbon emission and ways to help global warming if uh, you have a close uh, up on this uh, image you can see the effects of uh, global warming around the world so what is actually climate change when we are talking about climate change we are thinking about global phenomenon of climate transformation characterized by the changes in the usual climate of the planet and we can see a lot of um, transformations nowadays from uh, for example in romania we has four seasons spring summer autumn and uh, winter nowadays i can say romania have only two seasons uh, summer and winter so uh, temperature is uh, changing precipitations and wind as well that are especially caused by human activities and uh, we uh, if we are thinking about human activities we must think about deforestation about uh, gas emission and so on as a result of uh, unbalancing the weather of the earth the sustainability of the planet's ecosystems is under threat as well as the future of human kind and the stability of the global economy a look 
what is happening nowadays. For example, in some countries where never was snowing, in those days it's snowing. In other countries where, uh, let's say, never was um, uh, summer, um, high temperature, nowadays uh, it, it is happening. NASA's definitions of climate change says it is a broad range of global phenomena created predominantly by burning fossil fuels, which add heat trapping gases to Earth's, Earth's atmosphere. These phenomena include the increased temperature trends described by global warming, but also encompass and uh, change such as uh, sea level rise, ice mass loss in Greenland, Antarctica, the Arctic, and mountain glaciers worldwide. Shifts in flower, plant blooming, and extreme weather events. And we can see, uh, I believe Dr. Siham told you about the floods and uh, a lot of raining here in her uh, area in New Zealand. So extreme uh, events are happening nowadays in many countries around the world. Climate change usually refers to the shifts in things like precipitation, wind patterns, and uh, temperatures over a given period of time. Measure changes in climate could last a few years, decades, or even a millions of years. Who is responsible for climate change? Do you guess? I think yes. So when we are talking about climate change, we are often talking about the increase in temperatures, as I said, linked to industrial activities and in part particular, the greenhouse effects. Therefore, we sometimes speak of global warming, which is said to be of anthropogenic origin. Ultimately, the causes of global warming, at least at its current uh, rate, are not natural, but driven by the human economy and industries. So let's go green before we go blue we must uh, learn how, how to do that. The five causes of climate change can be like that. Fossil fuels expand autoplay, deforestation, fluorinated gases, fertilizers containing nitrogen, increasing livestock farming, but there are many more than that. Some examples of climate change. We can notice around the world raising sea levels, shrinking mountain, mountains, glaciers, ice melting at the faster rate than usual in Greenland, Antarctica, and uh, the Arctic change in flower and plant blooming times. Uh, for example, in Romania, usually spring comes by 1st of March. But uh, for a few years, all the plants are blooming, blooming uh, start by January sometimes. So uh, this is an effect of uh, climate changing. The first assumptions about the greenhouse effect were made by scientist Jacques Fourier in 1824, whose work was flawed by several scientists who tried to quantify this phenomenon like Claude Pollet, Jean Tyndall, and Swan Arrhenius. In fact, Arrhenius was the one who conducted the first experiment that accurately validated and quantified the greenhouse effect at the end of the 19th century. He discovered that an air rich in um, carbon dioxide 
retains more heat from solar radiation, leading to an increase in air temperature. So let's act now in order to change the situation. In the end, he concluded that if large quantities of carbon are released into the atmosphere because of industrial activities that burn coal, the air will be charged with CO2 and more heat will be retained. By the time the first estimated of estimators of uh, temperature increases made by Arrhenius and other scientists were that if the greenhouse gases trapped in the atmosphere doubled, the average temperature of Earth will increase, would increase by five grade uh, Celsius. In 1901, Gustav Ekholm used uh, for the first time the term greenhouse effect to describe uh, this phenomenon. The consequences of climate change, an increase in temperature due to global warming, it's not only about a heat increase that can be felt by humans or glacial ice melting. It has the potential to affect the planet's entire ecosystem and be sure it is happening nowadays. As we have been watching in many different countries, from the US, California to India or South Africa, the weather is getting disruptive. Extreme weather events are more regular and their patterns are changing. They are more intensive, aggressive and with more, more energy. This means more storms, floods, cyclones and droughts will take place over the next years. And I do believe what is happening nowadays in Turkey and Syria with um, moving of the earth, it's also an effect of climate change and global warming. It's uh, also an effect of uh, people activities, human ac ac actions, actually. At the same time, the regulating capacity of oceans is also being affected by an increase in temperatures. If global temperatures increase dramatically, ocean levels uh, level will not only increase, they will also be facing the ecological challenges of ocean acidification and deoxygenation. At the same time, forest area, uh, for example, Amazon rainforest, fragile ecosystems like coral reefs and biodiversity like corals, insects, and mammals are also under threat. There are, of course, consequences of uh, climate change on society on, uh, and also on the economy of any countries. So furthermore, climate change is already challenging and can further challenge our societies. With the increase in temperatures in some countries, especially in equatorial regions, the flow of climate refugees is changing and increasing. Studies say the reason for this move have to do with natural resources, such as drinking water, uh, that are getting more limited and uh, many crops and livestock that are unlikely to survive, affecting locals, but also the global economy of the several industries that rarely unrav materials in specific location because of the temperatures being too hot or too dry, too cold or too wet. And as it turns out, studies say that the wealthiest countries of the world will be the ones experiencing fewer uh, changes in their local climate com compared to the poorest regions. If the global average surface temperatures reach the bedouin 
uh, one dot five uh, grade to two uh, grade Celsius. How to fight climate change? Because yes, we must start to fight climate change and to be the change for the future. We must first reduce our greenhouse gases emissions. To accomplish this, the first step is to embrace renewable energies that are naturally uh, replenished on a human time scale, such as sunlight, wind, rain, tides, waves, and geothermal heat, heat and avoid creating energy by the burning of fossil uh, fuels. To have a, a sustainable development, we need to adapt our lifestyle to overcome those, uh, these uh, growing challenges that climate change is bringing. So nowadays, uh, you all know that we are talking about sustainable development, 17 goals, but um, it's not easy to fight for uh, uh, reduce the global warming, actually. Simple tips to reduce your carbon footprint. You can see here in this image and what we can do, switch it off, turn off the lights when natural light is sufficient and when you leave the room, it's that simple for all of us. Climate control, keep your temperature system on a moderate setting while uh, you are in the room. Wasteful windows. Use your windows wisely. If your climate control system is on, shut them. If you need a little fresh air, turn off the heat or AC. Give it a rest. Power your computer down when you are away. A computer turned off uses at least 65% less energy. Minimize blue blood. Cut down the number of uh, appliances you are running and you will save big on uh, energy. Loaded laundry, only do full loads of laundry and use the bright color cycle whenever possible. Shorter showers, try to take uh, shorter showers. The less hot water you use, the less energy is needed to heat the water. And uh, phantom power, did you know that many electronics continue using energy even when powered down? So those are simple tips to reduce your carbon footprint. Oh, and here is one more. Take the stairs, use the stairs as often as possible. Elevators consume electricity. You, on the other hand, do not. A few more tips, conserve paper, print and copy on two sides, save single sides page for notes and print only what you need, recycle, take a few steps to a recycling, a recycling center in your building to deposit aluminum, aluminum cans, plastics, glass, office paper, and so on, pick up uh, of office electronics, uh, bulk, mental, and surplus furniture can be arranged by contacting uh, facilities work management. Promote reuse, donate used cell phones and chargers, get a little exercise, and consider walking on uh, or uh, reading a bike to campus if the distance is uh, re reasonable. Of course, uh, while pandemic period, uh, we was asking ourselves, uh, is the climate change related to coronavirus? Somehow, is there any connection? So yes, uh, certainly the new coronavirus crisis has been having positive ecological effects in the short term. As we have seen in uh, China's forced lockdown, 
that caused people to stay home, a huge, huge decline in industrial activities followed. This leads to a decrease in coal, poverty, electricity production, and in the pollution that comes along with it. So somehow we can say coronavirus uh, help climate change. This has been the case across the globe as government leaders ask or demand their citizens to stay home to stop the spread of the virus. Production decreases. There is uh, there is less pressure on resources, less fuel burned in transportation, fewer carbon emissions and less air pollution. But I don't know if we are happy with that because uh, maybe coronavirus uh, help in uh, climate change, but um, unfortunately make people to stay away from each other and that's not a good point as well. Since the start of the new coronavirus crisis, all of this mediatic momentum suddenly disappeared. We almost forget about the unbelievable, unbelievable uh, fires that just a couple of months ago were burning in Australia, in the Amazon forest or in California. It makes sense. In the midst of an imminent and scary problem with tangible consequences, the treaten each and every one of us who wants to hear about distant problems like climate change and biodiversity loss. What can we do? And here I will uh, share some of my activities uh, we are doing uh, through schools and uh, through international projects. For example, here you can see Worldwide Green Project, Save Environment, Save the Future. And uh, our uh, purpose is to plant as many trees as possible in different schools. Uh, my school is also involved in climate action project by Cohen teamers from Germany. And uh, you can see um, products from um, different uh, ecological materials made in schools by students. So let's start with 10 impactful actions like save energy at home, walk, bike, or take public transport, eat more vegetables, consider your travel if you have to go or not, throw away less food, reduce, reuse, repair, recycle, Change your home's source of energy, if it is possible. Switch to an electric vehicle, if this will be um, not uh, very expensive, I will buy one for me, <laughs> will be nice. Choose eco-friendly products, because you can see uh, in the market uh, such of products. products. And speak up, uh, I mean, you have to share your point of view with all around you. It's very easy for us as teachers, as professors, to share the impact uh, to our students and our colleagues as well. In conclusion, in a society facing an uh, economic crisis, the trend is almost always the same. All efforts are concentrated on recovery. The state injects lots of money into the banking system to encourage consumption costs in non-essential sectors are cut to improve productivity. Public budgets are redirected to towards uh, stimulus policies and so on. A robust financial package will be put in place to stem to crisis. And what about ecology? It is left to the second level. 
and we must put these uh, on the first place because ecology is uh, one of the best things we can do in order to reduce um, global warming. Thank you so much for uh, your... Uh... Thank you. Hello, Dr. Siham. It's nice to see you. <laughs> I I think our host. Nice to see you too. <laughs> Sorry, I just I, saw your message. So I was. Came in. Yeah. I was live with you. I see you live. Oh. Very nice okay. presentation. Very good. And uh, I you. get to know a lot about New Zealand uh, climate change effects. I can say. <laughs> I think that all of us we are sharing the same issues yes because uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. which uh, cool yeah. is for all of us to collaborate exactly to help and support each other i yeah, totally agree with alone. you we cannot do it alone at all it's true but the change yeah. start with us yeah as individual well, it, 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 they say there is a saying if you want to make any changes start by yourself yes exactly right <laughs> right That's the popular saying is there is there is no questions on the um, no obviously no I, there's nothing in I, the chat i don't know yeah i think some of the people think that we are still in a break or something <laughs> uh, so more power participant uh, is having their breakfast. Ah, uh, it's breakfast uh, time. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> it's lunch time, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I it believe. is known. Mm -hmm. It's known. So thank you, ma'am, and uh, let's move ahead. And uh, we wanted to take a moment to express our heartfelt gratitude to Corona Tuesday for our enlightening presentation on global global warming solution and ways to help uh, reduce carbon emissions during the season your expertise and passion for the topic were truly inspiring and your insights will undoubtedly prove invaluable to those of us working to address the pressing issue of climate change so as you so eloquently articulated in your presentation, reducing carbon emission is one of the most critical steps we can take to combat global warming from decreasing our reliance on fossil fuels to promoting energy efficiency and conservation. There are countless ways in which we can work together to lower, uh, lower our carbon footprint and protect our planet for future generations. Your presentation not only highlighted the urgent need for action, but also provided practical solutions that individuals and organizations can implement to reduce carbon emissions. Your clear and concise explanations of, of uh, complex issues such as carbon capture and storage and renewable energy technologies were particul particularly are uh, not worthy and i am certain that many of us left the summit with a newfound uh, understanding of these important topics also i would like to thank you once again for your outstanding contribution to the summit thank you ma'am thank you too namaste namaste ma'am so next to me uh, dear distinguished guests and participants of this summit it is our pleasure to welcome you all to the this important gathering on climate justice and housing policy with a major focus on the critical issue of us so dr murali bonor kar sorry if i spell wrong sir who is an i triple senior member and a faculty member at the department of electronics in Shivaji university koholpur india we are delighted to be part of this global conversation on one of the most pressing challenges facing our planet.
the issue of climate change has become an urgent concern for all of us and it and it requires our collective attention and action the impact of climate since on our planet is clear with rising temperatures since uh, changing weather patterns and an increase in natural disasters or calamities affecting millions of people around the world at the same time we are also facing a growing crisis in housing with many people struggling to find affordable and adequate shelter but there is another issue that that is deeply connected to both climate change and housing and that is the issue of e waste as as our world becomes more digital and technology driven we are generating more and more electronic waste we can have seriously uh, we we can have serious consequences for the environment and human health this is a problem that affects all of us and it is important that we come together to find solutions so in this summit i am confident that we will have productive discussions exchange valuable insights and develop actionable strategies to tackle these complex issues we encourage all of you to engage in meaningful dialogue share your experts and experiences and collaborate towards a common goal creating a more just equitable and sustainable future for all so once again i extend my warmest welcome to dr Murali Bonarkar and wish you a fruitful and inspiring summit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Rohan. And especially, I would like to thank uh, Corina Sazdia. Sazdia. Uh, perhaps uh, I could join because of uh, Corina. Uh, just uh, uh, I was just uh, discussing some idea about Corina. So, what are your interested topic, and on what topic you can discuss as a researcher, as an educator? So, within these uh, situations, I could, uh, or we could uh, convey or the message one to other. So, even having but a big, huge. We can say the whole globe it doesn't matter. We are wondering, 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 searching, 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 doing lot of, lot of, no limit. But, but is there any certain, certain imagination behind the man? What can we do? Where we can stood? Where we can end? Never, ever. But the nature affects many of the things because of man-made lot of activities which are going globally, not here in India, as well as what every place, every corner of this globe. See, uh, today's topic, I'm going to present uh, idea, an idea about e-waste and uh, environment. Can I share my slide? Yes, please. Okay, is it okay? Am I edible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay, that's good. Okay, see, uh, we are talking or we are discussing regarding what uh, whole global, how uh, the global warming is arising and how or what to do. Or it's a big challenge among the people. Yes, it's true. But EWEST is the, one of the what major issue uh, uh, for environment, which is going to cause very, very lot of, lot of tremendous effects because of e-waste. See the electronic gadgets, e-waste is not only only for the like these uh, computers, CDs and pen drives because number of gadgets, number of uh, devices, number of uh, instruments we are using in our day-to-day -day lives. So see the 
uh, electronic gadgets is one of the what important device where everybody anybody can or everybody is using in a day to day lives see the uh, currently over 2 billion smartphones more than more than more than 2 billion smartphones in the world is arising and again what day to day life in day to day life it is growing growing and uh, upgrade is arrived every day day to day so meaningful changes in gadget technology tends to happen every 3 to 4 years and it is going on we are searching we are facing so every day each and every person wants something new so that's why suppose i have purchased something some gadgets today later on after one year two year even having uh, the life of that gadgets but we have to replace it this is the tendency of we people are human being people so as per uh, atonos uh, maropolos e-waste quantities are rising three times faster than the world population and 13% faster than the world's gdp during the last five years so as per uh, this atonis really he described uh, with the uh, proper manner how the e-waste is going to what increasing now increased almost so suppose we are considering the how much exactly indian markets is consuming some gadgets some electronic devices and again lot more so near by what 14 to uh, 25 2014 uh, till 2025 how much exactly this uh, uh, consumers electronics markets will cease near by what uh, how much in usd dollars so it is so it so just so it should be mobile television refrigerator refrigerator set up boxes digital cameras acs and lot more and how much exactly it would be in suppose you are considering the what uh, uh, tons so it's supposed to be it, it will go just up to what million tons so this is this is a what is exactly again what tons so one metric tons means what again what 1000 kg so we are we will consume this much amount after what nearby uh, 2025 it's supposed to be in md that is metric tons so one metric ton is nothing but what 1000 kg this much amount we are going to our grass up within a 2025 so these are the some miracles how much exactly the materials are uh, uh, are to be occupied inside the uh, such uh, electronic devices might be ceramics might be ferrite might be copper steel uh, pcbs lead and other metals so really these metals are very dangerous somehow okay somehow easily we can decompose but some materials we could not easily decompose so it takes more than 100 years 200 years then later on emission can produce so then decomposition can be possible so while doing suppose all the gadget while using all the gadgets we have to take care see see these are the number of what uh, uh, actually the gadgets are some uh, devices we are uh, consuming like this what pcb boards screens tables metal plastics and plastics near by what near by what how much exactly more than 40 to 50 percent such materials is go- are going to produce some pollution so it means what near by what more than 3 to 4 percent this uh, uh, these materials are going to produce pollution so definitely see see suppose there is about uh, some fire and smoke is coming out so definitely we could find out so something is going on but the smoke is going to produce through the electronic devices which is which cannot be seen with the naked eye so that is horrible so it's uh, definitely suppose there is emission and emission is going on day by day definitely we will inhale the same and definitely it will attack on our lungs definitely cancer will be pure cancer will be the possible for human beings 
So these are the number of, uh, suppose uh, we are considering one PC, monitor and the CPU. So within these one systems, how much exactly, how much quantity of these materials can be vast? So like suppose plastic, lead, mercury, arsenic, cadmium, chromium, barium, beryllium. So like this, suppose you are considering a PC, one computer setup. So at that time, we have to consume this much weight. So nearby what number of countries globally are really involved in e-waste management. How to collect the e-waste management, e-waste from the each and every corner of the village, cities, metro cities, district places, then globally. So that situation, that uh, tradition is going on, but very, 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 very down level. See the, suppose you are going for Europe, if you are in Oceania, USA, Asia, and Africa, see, uh, so, so this blue print shows us what, uh, that is the thing, but recycle here, recycled, recycle is very, very, recycling is very, very essential. So how much exactly we are recycling? 42.5. Suppose if you are considering Europe, if you are going for Oceania, so it is 8.8. .8. Suppose you are going for USA, 9.4. And... Uh, SCI is 11.7. Like this, number of countries are involved in this situation. If you are going for especially India, so Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal, Delhi, Karnataka, Gujarat, and Madhya Pradesh. So number of tons per year, we are what developing such e-waste. So if you are going for especially in Maharashtra, so it is up to what 20% of e-waste we are going, going everywhere, every year. So see that this is a very, very bad situation. How uh, the places, how the rivers, how the lakes are dumped with uh, some polluted materials, plastics and elastic and uh, wires and cables and all e-waste. See the very before the landfill, this process was uh, you were, were used to uh, consume or decompose such uh, materials, but it is not possible in easy way because just as I said, so number of years, it takes number of years to decompose such electronics materials or e-waste. See, 60% uh, organic waste we are uh, using, we are, we are getting across what land landfills. And suppose these, these are the water, uh, so big landfills about uh, e-waste. So definitely the global e-waste generated, suppose we are considering nearby what 2019. So how much exactly, uh, how much million tons e-waste is going to produce? So this is the scenario of uh, 2019. So uh, there are certain formal and informal, informal e-waste management. Some of the sectors, government sectors are doing well, but uh, those are not going to handle properly through the officers, through the peoples, through the users. So that's why somehow the, but uh, somehow formal and informal process are uh, uh, such uh, uh, managements are a high level. So number of sources, Suppose we are going for e-waste sources. What are the e-waste sources? If we, are, if we are using every day in our lives. You will see a simple battery, motherboard, then uh, refrigerators, uh, televisions. All these are the uh, e-waste uh, sources. And uh, what are the constituents? Very, very essentially. See, what are the ingredients we could find out? Lead, cadmium, mercury, then uh, plastics, uh, brominated phlegm. These are the very, very dangerous. And what type of effect can be developed through such ingredient? So definitely, in all way, it affects our human health. So what has electronics? What to do as what electronics engineer or as a electronics era? If you are suffering, so how we have to sustain our environment? Okay, everywhere the global warming is going on, definitely, but we have to sustain it. Just uh, uh, Corina suggested some idea about what to do for sustain, but single person can't do. So this is the anonymously process where we could consume 
we lot of lot of ideas but we have to sustain it so what has electronics so see the number of what uh, gadgets and number of what atoms are to be found as a electronics waste but it is supposed to be what sort out in what a proper manner suppose paper is there glass is there metal is there organic is there e waste is there plastic is there so such a type of what uh, cycling process is very very essential then easily can sort out the e waste so such type of mission supposed to be everywhere with each and every corporation <coughs> so it is our duty how what to do and how it can do okay these are the some uh, theoretical views i am not going to uh, present see the scenario everywhere in not in india na uh, everywhere in africa in uh, uh, certain countries we are getting this scenario so number of people number of laborers are working on this and even they are not expert age how to what uh, decompose how to uh, sort out all the electronic devices all the electronic materials but due to untrained mechanisms they are also inhaling these poisonous gases and uh, somehow they are going away they are died passed away because of what some some such inhaling oxygen carbon dioxide and many more poisonous gases with oxygen so this is again what one of the what uh, example where we could find out from china that is ganglong province so i will show one of the what uh, video which uh, which was made from that uh, province so what to do we we we, we see so e waste is there but there should be proper decomposition process is there proper what uh, sort out process is very very essential that how a material recovery facility works see uh, in modern countries like denmark and some uh, some in india also australia also uh, so many of the countries are having what that much large if uh, i am the producer i am the what manufacturer and i am producing some some of the water uh, electronic devices like suppose the refrigerator so definitely the uh, uh, the life of that refrigerator is suppose what 10 year so it is my duty as a manufacturer i have to uh, back out after 10 years from the what users but such type of what happening is not going throughout the world so that's why the e waste is going on going on going on we are putting as a garbage inside the home inside the room inside the garage but we are not procuring the systems which are made from the industry <coughs> see uh, recycling is a very very essential recycling very very essential everybody is know the only the recycling but what to do exactly for the recycling okay one suppose what i made uh, some electronic devices suppose what a gadget is there so definitely number of what elements uh, number of what uh, uh, materials are involved in there number of ingredients are there those are very harmful but how to sort out is there okay once is suppose what recycling reprocessing uh, that is okay but how or what to do for that process it is our duty to learn and teach the students and the environment okay many of the what like sweden's uh, recycling revolution so they are what man, uh, maintaining proper uh, utilization of part each and every section suppose plastic is there i will keep it there plastics so like this so see the different what uh, uh, trays are there suppose bottle is there we will keep it at the at the place of what what bottle if plastic bottle is there i will keep it there only pages papers are there i will keep it there so like this what a different scenario supposed to be there just i showed uh, previous one of the water image uh, there are the different dustbins glass paper and other things are there so there should be sub, there supposed to be proper uh, process which can easy to decompose all so see uh, like this uh, iron ore bauxite lead chromium manganese nickel cobalt lithium rare earth copper coal uranium these are very very hazardous for human beings not only human beings 
these are the hazardous for all living things so definitely all uh, and and all these hazardous process can develop through electronic waste so that's why we have to use what limited gadgets we have to use essential gadget and uh, after life of that gadget we have to survive our life or survive our life we have to decompose properly but it is not going on so as per the concept of what what can we do avoid conflict zones like a, a democratic republic congo where many of the key raw materials needed to make smartphone are found very essential yes we are going fair for part, uh, partners with local organizations to source them from sustainable mining project that also help the local population by providing income properties opportunities so like this uh, tries to source materials more sustainably and design products with a longer life that are easier to repair like optical fiber materials suppose optical fiber materials has what uh, more like more life so is it possible to use optical fiber materials across such electronic devices see the this is one of the what example the brothers uh, carsons was and uh, hamuels uh, founded sheep to what produce more sustainable smartphones so what they do uh, they were discussing some of the ideas about how to do so since 2014 produce 30000 smartphones use only 100 g of gold see they replace coltan uh, short for polymeroid uh, tantalite with the uh, ceramics this is again one good idea where they can see the modular cells it was very utak bulky then later and later and later and it goes to what now now like the pocket keep as much as you can as long as you can smartphone lives live longer be cleaner so like this motto it is very essential nowadays so alternatives are there suppose uh, uh, such a materials who are not uh, those materials are not going to our produce are not harmful definitely every material is harmful but somehow some materials are less harmful we have to select we have to uh, uh, purchase or we have to find out such a materials which can produce what less emission so definitely uh, there is a what uh, Uh, latent process that is a linear economy and circular economy everywhere this uh, uh, process that is a uh, selling and buying resale and buying and uh, this energy is, is going on so everywhere we have to find out what renewables so definitely like this way if there is e waste if there are e waste we have to latent like this what we have to renew the ideas to sustain the what global so circular economy is like this what uh, as per this uh, uh, presentation you can go for this so definitely we have to apply the different ideas for uh, decompose electronic waste and but it is not easy to decompose so see the uh, suppose a plant is there or suppose what leaves are there or some again what plastic is there we can decompose we can do some ideas but uh, e-waste it is not easily can be drawn so this is very very tough so the waste management startups are making profit in india many of the uh, places so at my place at my university uh, we having center for e waste management and i am working as a, a secretary for the same so what we are doing everywhere every offices i think at suppose considering my uh, example my university every year was producing suppose what uh, nearby what two ton e waste so how uh, so the discussion were plans what to do for such uh, e waste just uh, previously just we are selling that e waste but uh, now uh, on campus we are doing utilizing proper management sort out batteries pcbs electronic uh, that uh, components then we are going to what separate the crushing is going on after crushing the metals copper aluminum 
plastic types of the pieces can be sort out so this process is very very essential so what to do everywhere reduce reuse and recycle everywhere this motto is now familiar reduce reuse recycle so as per what international e waste day so this is a unanimously it is going on so lot of lot of are that is a repair realize recover re rotate remember refuse rot reflect remediate replenish responsibilities return relate but it is related to what reduce reuse recycle so these are the what three r's but as per my opinion i have to introduce one more r so that is nothing but what reduce reuse recycle and recover so then and then only we have we can sustain our nation our globe our earth see reduce reuse recycle recover and see the some people are very very happy they have what they already they have already landlord they have lot of money they, okay doesn't matter but uh, somehow in another cases we are getting such situation as per this so the money could be yours but the resources belongs to society so okay the power is there power is with you but the sources you are using above the earth across the earth surface that is the belongs to society so that's why equal sharing equal uh, considering and equal uh, responsibility it makes global things happy things so like this way if you are developing definitely needs of people's day to day lives in day to day lives we are getting suppose new ideas but definitely these new gadgets new ways new materials supposed to be more more sustainable so this is my today's task that is reduce reuse recycle and recover it can somehow control the e waste thank you thank you so much uh thank you sir uh, i think there is a uh, uh, question from our participant from mid pradeep podel uh, he is saying that asking that how does e waste management intersect intersect with other sustainability issues such as energy and resource conservation hello please hello rohan please sorry he is asking about that how does e e waste management intersect with with other sustainability issues such as energy and resource conservation yes 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 this is a wonderful question see suppose uh, uh, at your campus are some of the institutes suppose having what some e waste so uh, after all what i will do or what we can do we have to collect the each and every e waste materials like computer refrigerator cds dvds batteries suppose uh, we are uh, collecting at a single place then what what can we do we we can we can first segregate each and every elements plastic is different okay uh, with what our students with the help of our students or with the help of what some of the people who are laborer there so we will sort out uh, uh, plastic we will sort out iron we will sort out again what pcbs and again what some electronic devices capacitor resistors like this okay after all see the e waste consuming what are consisting what are different with what ingredient like uh, iron gold silver then uh, lot more so what can we do we have to crush it we have to crush it we have to make it powder and Uh, with through the powder the different type of materials can be separated with what a different box through this powder suppose uh, one of the what example let me express see the i think uh, in australia in sydney so there was about olympic i think in uh, 19 uh, sorry uh, 2016 2016 2016 or 17 so at that time through the evest materials so the momentum was made and that moment was given to the bat player 
So such type of an innovative uh, message can give uh, in a society. So you can do if uh, having what a uh, huge level of what uh, invest with you. See, many of the what NGOs are doing doing just only hopeless things. They are just collecting that invest and selling to the other. But nobody is what worried. What to do? What type of what mechanisms can take place later on? But what they do? Just collect the suppose invest. Okay, plastic will be separated. I have I find some peoples, many peoples. They are burning that PCBs. So just directly they told me. So nobody is what about this purchasing this material. So that's why we burning all the things. Only the iron and uh, plastics just we are selling. So he is not aware. He is untrained. So that's why it is very it is our duty as a trainer, as an expert. We have to suggest some idea. Don't do like this. Uh, because I have suggested some idea for, for my institutes. See, I, we are selling suppose these materials, but uh, it is our duty to clarify what type of mechanisms, whether the proper decomposition is going on later on. It is my duty. But uh, such type of things not happen happening globally. But some of the what NGOs are doing nice in uh, India, yeah, that uh, Madras, Chennai, it is going on. And many of the what workers, laborers working on there, but they are supposed to be with a trained opinion, trained opinion. Otherwise, we are going suppose empty mind. So definitely, that uh, labor will inhale the same again emission. Definitely, after uh, two, three, four years, he or she will die. But nobody can claim so she or he was died because of what. emission of electronic waste this is the real tragedy and this is going on globally not in india not in uh, america not in australia not in denmark or not in croatia or romania everywhere the same scenario is there so training to what each peoples at least who are the educator who are the expert who are the researchers it is our responsibility Then and then only we can sustain. Otherwise, everything will be on only paper. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. I think there is no more question from our participants. So we would like to take a moment to express our gratitude to Dr. Murali for your thoughtful and insightful speech on the critical issue of e-waste during this summit. on climate justice and housing your expertise and experience in this field have been invaluable in shedding light on the challenges and opportunities presented by e waste and your commitment to promoting sustainability and responsible management of electronic waste is truly inspiring the issues of e waste is one that affects us all and it is essential that we work together to find solutions that are equitable effective and environmentally sustainable your contribution to to this conversation has been invaluable and i believe that your ideas and insights will help guide us towards towards more just and sustainable future thank you for sharing your expertise and experience with us and for your ongoing com commitment to in to addressing the challenges posed by e waste we are deeply grateful for your contribution and we look forward to continuing the conversation and collaborating towards some more just and sustainable world thank you sir thank you thank you so much let me make one of the announcement who is supposed to be more interested with collaborate with our department with our sections so heartily welcome so we are doing work on what e waste what to do or what type of what procedure or what type of uh, action to be takes place so we are motivating what our peoples corporation corporation and some corporators also being with us thank you so much hearty welcome suppose somebody is interested with for this field thank you sir and the dais is jenisha uh thank you sir and moving on Uh, continuing the summit, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is our pleasure to introduce our next speaker, 
uh, Associate Professor Dr. Irana Kachu. Uh, Irana Kachu is a Associate Professor Dr. Irana Kachu is an accomplished uh, researcher and academic with expertise in the fields of environmental policy, civil society, and economic development. She is currently affiliated with the uh, Chernivis sorry, Chernivtsi University in Ukraine, where she serves as an associate professor in the Department of Science Studies. Additionally, Dr. Kachuk is an uh, honorary uh, research fellow in the field, Dr. Jan Yu Sandal Institute, a uh, research fellow in the social economic, sorry, uh, she's a uh, resource fellow in the School of Economic Policy Studies in Nepal and a member of various professional organizations in her field. Throughout her career, Dr. Kachuk has a made significant contribution to the study of environmental policy and its impact on the civil society. Her research has focused on a range of issues and including sustainable development, climate change, and the role of non-governmental organizations in environmental governance. She has also explore the impact of economic policies on environmental sustainability, particularly in the context of developing countries. Dr. Katsuk's research has been widely published in academic journals and edited volumes, and she has presented her work at numerous international conferences and symposia. Her research has garnered recognition and acclaim from her peers in the academic community, and she has been awarded several grants and fellowships to support her uh, research activities. As a dedicated educator and mentor, Dr. Ka, Dr. Kachuk has also trained and mentored numerous students and young researchers in the field of environmental policy and civil society. She has served as a thesis supervisor for a graduate student, organized workshops and training programs on environmental policy and governance, and advised governmental and a non government organization on environmental policy issues. So please join me in welcoming Associate Professor Dr. Irana Kachuk here. It's over to you, Dr. Kachuk. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for inviting me here. I'm uh, happy to be present uh, on a such high level international summit and uh, i will be happy to share with you some of ideas uh, of uh, my scientific research and of uh, something that i'm doing here in ukraine with uh, civil society finances and of course uh, um, due to the problems of uh, ecology but i need first of all to share with you my screen so one moment Okay. So I I'd like to share the screen uh, with you. Yes. Uh, can you see uh, my screen? Yes, ma'am. It is visible. Okay. So uh i know that the main topic of our meeting today is environment justice uh, the basic idea of which is that those who are least responsible for climate change will suffer the worst consequences today however i want to raise uh, the issue of other victims who are innocent and essentially became hostages of the political and geographical ambitions of un one political clan and I will mention uh, the political um, uh, policy which uh, makes um, a clan of a political clan of Vladimir Putin. In particular, this applies to environmental, uh, environmental justice. And also, I want to mention the problems, problems related to the financing of the activities of public organizations in Ukraine during the COVID pandemic and the war with Russia. However, first briefly about the activities of non-governmental organizations. The activities of civil society institutions or non-governmental organizations, in particular uh, public organizations, are directly aimed at solving problems or meeting the needs of their participants, individual social groups, or even the entire society. 
And you also operate in all spheres, economic, political, science, culture, education, ecology, etc. The most common type of NGOs, both in Ukraine and around the world, including youth, veteran, children, scientific, cultural, and educational, physical, culture, and sport, can include those whose activities are directly aimed at protecting the solution of environmental problems. The activities of environmental NGOs have always been in particular demand. Such environmental organizations are well known as Global Alliance on Health and uh, Pollution, Air System, Governments Projects, School Strike for Climate on uh, or Fridays for Future, Global Green Growth Institute, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, International Union on Conversation of Nature, United Nations uh, Environment Program, European Environment Agency, Partnerships in Environmental Management for the Seas of uh, East Asia. And to tell the truth, there are a lot uh, as, um, of other uh, non-governmental organizations which are uh, not uh, so well known, but uh, which are effective uh, in their region or countries. Most of these uh, organizations which are present uh, in the slide are also represented in Ukraine. Moreover, the demand for their activities increased significantly with the onset of the global pandemic of the coronavirus disease COVID-19, which often replaced the careful attitude of societies toward ecology with the instinct of self-preservation. This is explained by the need to introduce strict anti-epidemiological measures with most countries of the world resorted to. At the same time, the environment has become completely polluted with plastics, waste from the use of masks, shoe covers, protective suits, napkins, gloves, etc. The large-scale uh, Russian-Ukrainian war, which began with the invasion of Russian troops on the territory of Ukraine exactly one year ago. Yesterday, we have one year of uh, war. Significantly depend environmental problems in Ukraine. In Ukraine, Russia artillery and the fire caused by it, it destroys forests, tens of thousands of representatives of flora and fauna, polluted rivers and the seas and tens of thousands of square kilometers of the territory of Ukraine remain mined. Demining and complete clearing of this territory will take decades of years. But the effectiveness of the functioning of environmental NGOs like other CSIs significantly depends on the level of their financial support. Uh, which is influenced by the features of the socio-economic environment in which these organizations operate. Financing of non-governmental organizations in Ukraine is not significant in comparison with similar organizations in other European countries. Thus, the budget of an average non-governmental organization in Ukraine is 10 times smaller than the budget of a similar organization in Europe. Obviously, to be affecting an NGO need considerable financial resources. This also applies to NGOs um, of Ukraine. Government funding and donor financing make NGOs dependent on government policy or on the will of individual donors. Therefore, it is, seems obvious that uh, given the increase in public confidence in the activities of uh, NGOs in Ukraine, it is worthwhile to intensify the formation of budgets of NGOs from contributions of the population. It is possible for Ukrainian public organizations to receive person contribution from private individuals in two legal ways, membership fees and chari uh, charitable donations. Uh, figure one, uh, which are presented in this slide, graphically demonstrates the dynamics of the revenues for Ukrainian uh, public organization from membership fees and charity of private individuals. The data presented in figure one demonstrate a general trend towards an increase in the revenues from private individuals under both membership fees and charitable uh, donation of private individuals. However, the increase was not steady 
uh, decreases the revenues from membership fees uh, were observed in 2009 and 2014 and also in those uh, from the charitable donation of individuals in 2012, 15 and 17. The role of uh, revenues from private individuals in the structure of revenues of Ukrainian public organizations was not very stable, which is shown by figure two. This figure demonstrates uh, the tendency to reduce the percentage of membership fees in the revenue structure of Ukrainian public organization. Instead, the share of the revenues from charitable activities of private individuals were gradually increasing within the research period. The next figure uh, graphically displays the revenues from Ukrainian public organization from contributions of private individuals per capita. For a comprehensive analysis and creation of an effective system of revenues generation from private individuals using correlation and regression analysis, let us uh, see the peculiarities of the impact of some macroeconomic factors such as population, inflation, average and minimum wages and the number of employed populations on the formation of revenues from private individuals. The value of correlation coefficients that estimate the closeness of the linear relationship between the revenues from private individuals and macroeconomic indicators are provided in Table 1. The data from Table 1 demonstrates uh, the direct uh, relationship between the revenues of public organization from revenues of public organization uh, from, uh, from private individuals and the population and the relationship between the revenues of public organization from private individuals and the number of employed populations that are inverse. In addition, it is worth pointing out that all relationship, regardless of their orientation, are very close. Using the correlation matrix implies that the researchers is aware that the relationship of each pair of variables is influenced by the relationship with the other variables. That is, partial correlation coefficients can be used to determine the net correlation between the studied pairs of variables, eliminating the influence of other factors. The value of the partial cor correlation coefficients that estimate the net relationship between the revenues of public organization from private individuals and such macroeconomic indicators as population, inflation, average and minimum wages, and the number of employed population are given in Table 2. The Table 1 and Table 2 uh, differ significantly. As we can see, Table 2 shows a slightly weaker relationship between the revenues of public organizations for private individuals and the specific macroeconomic factors such as population, inflation, average and minimum wages, so the number of employed population. However, let us note that the direction of relationship uh, remain unchanged. That is, uh, we can state that in the period 2006-2019, support of uh, non-governmental organizations in Ukraine increased significantly thanks to the funds of private individuals. However, taking into account the long economic and financial crisis, as well as the instab instability of the political environment in Ukraine, which significantly depends on the COVID-19, as well as the full-scale invasion of Russian Federation on the territory of Ukraine, there are a number of problems, shortcomings and unresolved issues that accompany NGOs, in particular environmental ones, in the process of forming financial support for the activities. The main ones include impossibility due to uncertainty to carry out long-term financial planning and to develop a financial strategy for the development of CSIs. Absence as a rule of own income and dependence on ex external sources of financing. Reduction of funding due to economic crisis and a drop in production. In court registration of the CSI's acceptance of money from citizens and the cash register, which can be recognized as unrealized income. The difficulty of finding and finding stable sources of funding, obtaining them in the amount that will provide the necessary public benefits. 
also instability of the sources and the volumes of the CSIs due to macroeconomic and political instability in the country, high deficits of the state budget of Ukraine, significant inflation, volatility of the exchange range, imbalance of program priorities in the CSI budgets. The problems of the formation of financial resources is to find the most stable source of them to turn on uh, one-time revenues into permanent ones and short-term ones into long-term ones. Extremely limited availability and uh, too high price of loan funds for CSIs, the need of guarantees and uh, certainties. Absence of the possibility of issuing securities, participation in investment activities as an investor, experience on working in financial markets, restrictions certain types of operations, activities of CSIs in the certain segment of the financial market, and lack of financial literacy of CSIs employees. The presence of these problems and unresolved issues significantly complicates the functioning of environment NGOs whose services are particularly relevant and in demand recently. I'm sorry, it's my, my, my daughter. However, the solution of these problems requires a systematic approach and long-term measures and the organization needs funding already now. Therefore, today it is important for NGOs engaged in environmental activities to change their approaches to attracting funding sources, in particular using the existence of the pandemic itself. First of all, it is important to move away from the model of passively waiting for support from various donors and actively engage in fundraising activities. Among the methods, uh, of act actively attracting funding, we can highlight those uh, that are most suitable for environmental organizations during the COVID pandemic and the war with Russia. That is uh, grant activity, crowdfunding activities using domestic crowdfunding platform, as well as active fundraising activities using social network. It is worth nothing that the use of this method will not only make it possible to increase the level of financial support of environmental organizations during the war, but also to expand significantly the network of participants and supporters of such organizations. That's all. Thank you for your attention. And if you have some questions, of course, I will try to answer it. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in extending our gratitude to Associate Professor Dr. Irina Tikatsu for sharing her invaluable insights on the topic of the role of civil society organization in the fight against environmental problems. Dr. Tikatsu is a distinguished academic and researcher who has made significant contributions to the field of environmental studies or expertise in the subject matter is reflected in her research papers and articles that published in reputable journals. During her presentation, she highlighted the importance of the active involvement of civil society organization uh, in addressing environmental issues. She emphasized that these organizations have a critical role to play in creating awareness, mobilizing communities, and advocating orbo for policies that promote sustainability and eco friendliness. Our thought provoking talk has suddenly left us with much to ponder and act upon. Once again, on behalf of everyone present here, we express our sincere appreciation to Dr. Tikatsu for sharing our knowledge and inspiring us to take action in protecting our environment. So thank you. Uh, maybe you have some questions. Uh, I think there are no any queries right now, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Okay, continuing this summit here, we have now our um, esteemed presenter to take the dice and share uh, his insights with us. Um, 
in the diverse range of explorers from different fields so he'll be presenting on a wide range of topics related to climate justice sustainable development and the environment so now we would like to call here uh, mr ajit thapa uh, for for his valuable presentation here the dice is yours ajit good evening everybody Uh, good evening. You can say uh, your. I'm sorry for my net issues. Uh, my net is too slow, so I can't listen properly. And so, Jenny, I was going to say that, sir. It's all good. Okay. Um. Today, I'm going to um, say something about climate uh, justice. Hello, are you there? Uh, I think we got technical issues here. Uh, maybe uh, he got his internet connection interruption. Uh, uh, Ajit here is. Are you available now? Yes. Uh, okay. Net Please over. carry on. Okay, I'm going to uh, say something about climate justice in Far West in Nepal. Uh, especially, there are many. Hello, hello. Um, yeah, yeah, was, you are audible. Huh. First of all, I'm going to talk about housing. Housing is a basic human need that refers to having a roof over one's head. Uh, in far western Nepal, affordable housing is a major due to the limited access to finance and low e economic development in the region. However, innovative financing mechanisms can help address this challenge and provide affordable housing options for low-income families. Uh, there are some of the innovative uh, financing mechanisms for affordable housing in Housed in Nepal. Hello. Uh, uh, you are audible. Carry on. Okay. Uh, microfinancing is one of uh, those uh, affordable housing farms. Hello. 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 Uh, you are completely audible, Ajit. You can carry okay. on without any interruption. Microfinancing. Let's talk about something um, about microfinancing. Uh, 
Micro financing uh, institution can provide small loans to individual for housing construction and uh, improvement, uh, making it easier for low income families to access affordable housing financing. Uh, in the second number, there is a community based housing finance. The mechanism involves the creation of community based housing. Uh, is there any issues, Ajit? You can hold on a minute. Which provides loans to members of housing construction of an improvement. Members contribute to a common fund. In the third number, there is housing micro leasing. The mechanism involves the lease of small plots of land for housing construction to low income families. The families make rental payments, which can be used to repay the loan used to purchase the land. And at the second last, there is a social impact bonds, SIBS. SIBS are a form of uh, impact. Mm. Hello? Ajit, if you are getting any issues with the uh, network, uh, we have can... uh, crowdfunding. Hello. Um, I think you are getting a severe network uh, interruption here. My net... uh, I'm sorry uh, for you... that. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not. It's not the problem. Uh, if you got any issues or difficult to speak, you can um, uh, you can pause it here. Your presentation. Uh, I think I should stop now because my net is not working. Uh, okay. Um, you can carry on if uh, now the network is uh, uh, fixed. Leave. So. Okay. Uh, so we are very sorry to. Uh, we are very sorry here for the network disturbance uh, from our presenter side, but uh, we, we are really great. But it it was really great pleasure that uh, our presenter has give his uh, exceptional and insightful presentation on the topic of climate justice in Far West Nepal. Uh, since there is some kind some sort of network interruption, uh, uh, we got some issues while listening, but. Uh, uh, the Mr. Thapa's thought-provoking ideas and knowledge have uh, uh, helped us gain a better understanding of the complex issues surrounding uh, climate justice in the region. Uh, so moving on now, as we come to the end of this conference, I would like to take this opportunity to express the deepest gratitude to all our esteemed speakers who have shared their valuable insights and knowledge with us today. Each one of them has brought a unique perspective to the table, and we all and we have all benefited greatly from their wisdom. I would also like to thank all the participants who have taken the time out of their busy schedules to join us today. Uh, your active participation and engagement have made this conference a success and we appreciate your interest and contribution. I would also like to explain my gratitude to the organizers of this conference uh, who have worked tirelessly to put together such a wonderful event. Their reports have made this conference a great success and we all are uh, grateful for their hard work and dedication. Finally, I would like to thank our esteemed chairperson, Dr. Rudra Prasad Kimire for his guidance and support to our conference. His leaderships and expertise have been invaluable and we are grateful for his contribution.
once again thank you to everyone who has made this conference so successful and we look forward to continuing support in the have uh in the future and uh, i would like to call dr rudi prasad dimire here for the vote of thanks advice is yours sir thank you zenisa and rohan am audible or not you are audible sir okay okay it's clear uh yes it's perfectly clear okay okay thank you so much once again uh rohan and uh, jenisa for your wonderful performance you have done very well in the summit success uh let let me share some of the words on behalf of the seps nepal and uh, research foundation of india uh yesterday and today we are here for the international research summit on housing and climate justice for the affordable uh, inclusive and resilient south asia 2023 which is jointly organized by school of economic policy studies nepal and research foundation of india the main theme of the conference is 21st century housing policy climate justice and practice for affordable inclusive and resilient south asia 2023 the conference has a feature of high level parallel and technical sessions that have concluded the opinion and the research of uh, many uh, experts and the practitioners the sessions covers wide range of topics related to the some theme including emerging trends on climate change housing justice health crisis urbanization technology energy consumption capacity building role of uh, civil society uh, demand and supply of housing challenges and opportunities of housing justice policy programs activities related to the climate justice movement urban governance financial access and management uh climate friendly constructions designing of urban and rural areas uh say housing access the reason is facing severe effects of climate change including adaptation challenges due to floods landslides volcanoes and other natural disasters therefore the summit has given the conclusion of building resilience and uh, developing affordable and inclusive housing policies that can withstand the impact of climate change in the region yesterday we had two keynote speakers professor dr chandramani adhikari and professor dr ashok kumar gupta i would like to thank you to professor dr chandramani adhikari sir for your valuable contribution and uh, you have been sons in the summit that uh, the resilience aspect of the uh, climate effect and equal access of housing the the situations in the country and in south asian region uh, uh, you know the case is very severe and uh, how the region combat with the, these problems uh th that is this uh, that is the questions these days and uh, all south asian governments have to develop the integrated framework to establish equal access of housing and then uh, equal uh, city resilience as well as organizations uh, to 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 have access of uh, housing so a special thanks goes to professor dr chandramani adhikari similarly i would like to uh, express our gratitude to professor dr ashok kumar gupta for gracing us with uh, his presence and providing the insightful slides uh, uh, 
mentioning the crucial issues of climate justice. He focused on uh, climate justice and uh, highlighted uh, some of the uh, creative ways for su sustainable development and sustainable development uh, futures of the coming generation. He took some of the examples uh, from uh, different countries, uh, severe case of uh, lacking of housing and then a crisis of, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, climate or a crisis of, say, risk of climate. And in his presentation, he included the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, these are the driving force for settlement of the sustainable climate resilience and his emphasis was on importance of achieving goals and uh, uh, for the for the implementations he also ordered that the government should integrate all frames of long run and short run sustainable development plan and its implementations which definitely creates a new new frontiers for development in climate sectors and housing sectors and and the impact he also uh, discussed there the global warming on our planet is evident and the consequences are severe he highlighted there and uh, his emphasis on the effects and promotions of sustainable practices is vital to, to have the sustainable access for the new generation. So it's uh, part of uh, enlightening with the climate justice and affordable, inclusive, resilient Southeast Asia 2023 has become a milestone with his presentations. After that, uh, I would like to thank to Mr. Deepak Tama uh, with his insightful presentations in his presentations he has highlighted the essentials of uh, climate resilience and complexities of the problems how to mitigate uh, in that case so uh, his his presentations has enlightened uh, to know the ways of uh, this uh, both risk in different areas. And I would like to extend to Professor Sukuma uh, uh, Gupta, sir, because uh, he has uh, uh, discussed there that the role of the United Nations and the role of other agencies uh, to, to make a plan, to make uh, programs to implement everywhere in the world coordinating with the governments. Thank you, Professor. And I'd like to extend to our gratitude to Mr. Narawadur Thapasa for his presentations on housing technology and climate justice. He covered the issues of Nepal's case, history of Nepal's practices in housing buildings and encroachment of uh, housing practices. Similarly, he also uh, discussed on security of climate uh, risks and uh, human lives. Similarly, uh, uh, he, he discussed on the Millennium Development Goals and Sustainable Development Goals, emphasizing their significance in promoting sustainable development and addressing climate change. He stressed the need for the coordinated effort to achieve these goals involving government agencies, civil society organizations, and the private sectors. Moreover, he emphasizes the role of Nepal's constitutions in ensuring the right to housing. He elaborated on the constitutional provision that protects this right and stressed the importance of implementing these provisions to improve the living conditions of vulnerable populations. Mr. Thapa also touched on Nepal's international commitments related to housing, such as the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, Moreover, he highlighted the significance of these commitments and emphasized the need for continued efforts to meet them. Finally, he discussed various strategies and schemes for housing policies in Nepal. He elaborated on the government's effort to promote affordable housing, including housing policies, housing funds, and public-private partnerships. 
uh, similarly, I would like to thank you to uh, all students, presenters, uh, like uh, Sulab Adhikari, Praveen Khatka, Namrata Neopani, for your valuable and insightful presentations. You have extensively discussed about the knowledge and uh, their uh, uh, expertise uh, in these areas and uh, have certainly enriched uh, uh, our understanding of the crucial role and housing policy which can play in achieving climate justice. Their presentations provided a comprehensive overview of the current state of housing policy and its impact on climate justice, as well as the strategies and solutions for improving housing policies to better address the challenges of climate change. The way they highlighted the, uh, that the need for inclusive and sustainable housing solutions, which was uh, particularly noteworthy as uh, it underlined the importance of ensuring the marginalized communities and are not left behind in the pursuit of sustainable development. I would appreciate to you all, I would like to appreciate to you all for your presentations and your discussions, uh, definitely improving your level of understanding and also you are creating the further your, uh, you know, development of ideas uh, in the days to come. So your all of this have been the milestone for understanding uh, the, to your sites. And uh, it's a kind of contributions to the SEF Nepal and RFI. In this context, I would like to thank you to you all and uh, your uh, team, entire team. I would like to extend my thanks to thanks to Professor Von Eric Kendo for his uh, enlightening words on the topic of Sustainable Development Goals free and good health and well-being in reference to housing and climate change. His presentation was concentrated on the crucial connection between housing and health and how the impact of the climate change can exacerbate existing health inequalities. Similarly, I would like to uh, thank uh, uh, another our speakers, uh, uh, Sanjay Kumar. BK for his presentation on mental conditioning for mitigating climate anomaly. He had focus of education of sustainable development and ways to raise mental health conditions. He stressed on happiness for housing and climate justice. Economic prosperity depends on strategies of the government and stakeholders of related issues all over the world. Similarly, I would like to extend our thankfulness to Vinod Deva for his uh, uh, delivery on housing, business, and climate vulnerability. Vinod uh, Deva had highlighted aspects of all risks associated with housing issues and challenges and environmental degradations locally, uh, regionally, and globally. And he also has appealed on the role of the government in, in Southeastern countries as well as other supporting countries. And he also discussed that how uh, peoples are living in the vulnerable situations in rural sectors and the urban sectors. He has presented a uh, little bit kind of uh, say cases of Nepal community in his discussion. And the discussion was fruitful to know all about the situations of uh, housing situations as well as climate uh, uh, justice. Similarly, I would like to thanks to our Professor Dr. Siham E.I. Kofafi for her analysis on the impact of climate change and global warming on human health and well-being. She has uh, attempted to, uh, in our interaction sessions and uh, supporting us uh, uh, to understand well about the uh, role of the climate change and she added more that uh, the climate conditions affecting human life so all have accountability to manage all type of resilient stream climate change affecting people survival so all should have the earth policy saving earth policy 
with high responsibility. All governments should have quality programs and the projects that only can be a milestone to change the housing uh, housing policies or housing access to the rural and urban peoples, as well as that could be that would be the justice for uh, women. The consequence of climate change and hindering the biological system of leaves, that was another part of discussion on her slides. And uh, she added more that uh, the need to work together basis, uh, uh, people to people and govern government to government. She highlighted health issue and agriculture sectors are not getting, getting well conditioned because of uh, less implementation of agriculture uh, uh, projects and uh, plans. She added more that uh, the agricultural farming is essential and uh, others uh, what uh, she also explained what don'ts and uh, what do's and don'ts about the climate or environment safe. Similarly, uh, another speaker, uh, Corinne Susdia, uh, was uh, our uh, guest speaker, and I would like to express our thankfulness for presenting on global warming solution, reduce carbon emission, uh, ways to help global warming, including do and don'ts linking with the coronavirus and safe climate. What impactful action can be done? She has suggested in her slides. Similarly, Murali Varnakar added <coughs> some of the uh, opinions or some of the ideas in his slides that uh, uh, and and uh, says the uh, roles of uh, public as well as private sectors in management of e waste and uh, E, uh, say, uh, West End. So I would like to thankful to Dr. Murali K. Parnaikar. Uh, and at last, but not the least, I extend my special thanks and on VF of School of Economic Policy Studies and uh, uh, RFI, uh, I'd like to extend uh, gratefulness and uh, uh, his present, our presentation was uh, uh, concentrated on the role of uh, civil society organizations in fight of against environmental problems. So thank you, Associate Professor Dr. Inanna Taketu from Terenvik University, uh, Ukraine. She has highlighted the role of all organizations and case of Ukraine. Management of finance to solve climate change was her concentration in slides and uh, Financial resource allocation should come to anomaly of housing and climate risks. With, with, <coughs> with these uh, thanks, I would uh, like to miss the presentations of uh, Dr. Janet G. Villaroya. Uh, her presentation was on how to stop global warming. And uh, another speaker we missed. Veronica Sevon from Business Power Academy. Our presentation was on prohibition of housing building in dangerous area for climate justice. We hope they will present in next summit. And uh, um, with this uh, remarks, I would like to conclude my vote of thanks and uh, a uh, little bit I would like to summarize on uh, this uh, summit that uh, the the theme uh, we uh, first of all developed in the very beginning three months ago, but uh, it was not disclosed in the uh, community. Uh, but the letters, our teams and our uh, coordinators, our managers supported to uh, execute this summit. That's why I'm very much thankful to our team, including uh, managers and the coordinators. Uh, today, our dream have been uh, achieved. 
uh, with this discussions and uh, it's a kind of uh, uh, intellectual exercise uh, among the uh, scholars and the researchers as well as economists and lawyers. And they have emphasis more on climate justice movement as well as they have discussion more on how to have resilience on climate risk areas. Geographically, South Asia is vulnerable and the climate resilience totally depends upon the farmers, organizations, trade unions, indigenous peoples, organizations, <coughs> women organizations, environmental groups, political parties, and their governments. The climate crisis is a kind of chronic problem like capitalism. So all the governments and UN agencies, they have to explore where everyone can generate the fund or the resources and provide to facilitate the agriculture sectors, stakeholders, as well as other sectors. The solid concern was climate justice in the research summit. And uh, all the topics were totally related to the theme and their solutions when we read that are really important and key suggestions as well as recommendations for the government in South Asia as well as in the world. The many steps are there. The government have to do, the people have to do, people to people have to do, Government, have, government to government have to do, business to business have to do. That's why to protect the biodiversity, to protect the community behind the axis, the role of the peoples increasing, and definitely there is a, the concerns of the public health, and there is the concerns of the happiness, there is the concerns of prosperity. So totally these days, depending on solution of housing access and uh, climate resilience. So with these words, I'd like to express my sincere gratitude for the cooperation in this successful completion of the Research Summit on behalf of RFI and RFI itself has supported us. Many staffs incorporated their roles to complete our research projects and the conference, as well as the, this summit. So I also would like to extend my thankfulness to all of them. And because of the distance mode, we could not listen to some of the important words sentence given by our speakers. Though we are hearing, we have, we have patience to work with them, to coordinate with them, and to listen with them. So this type of uh, uh, energy we got because of their knowledge, disseminations in their respective times. So I would like to conclude this time and would like to see the same coordination, cooperation and support in the days to come physically as well as online. Thank you to all. Thank you, everyone. See you again. We must unite for the success to combat all issues and challenges coming ahead. Thank you. Thank you, sir.
uh, so we are at the end of the summit uh, so on behalf of the organizing committee i would we would also like to express our heartfelt gratitude to all of you for attending this conference on climate change and its impact on society we had a diverse and knowledgeable group of speakers uh, panelists and attendees and the disco discussions and exchanges of ideas that we have been truly inspiring we hope that this conference has provided you with new heights uh, new heights insights perspectives and solutions for addressing the challenges posed by climate change as we have heard from the speaker the need for urgent action to mitigate the effect of climate change is more pressing than ever before we would like to thank all the keynote speakers panelists and moderators for sharing their expertise and experiences with us also would also like to express our appreciation to our all the partners who supports and contributions for the success of this conference finally we would also like to express our uh, gratitude to the organizing team for their tireless efforts in making this conference possible we hope this conference has inspired you to take action and make a difference in our own communities and beyond let us continue to work together towards a sustainable and resilient future thank you Denisa, any words? Uh, no, sir. Thank you, everyone. Uh, you may leave now because the second international summit uh, is now uh, successfully conducted and uh, successfully conducted today. Uh, thank you, everyone. Once again, thank you to all. Okay. Bye. Thank you, every participants. Thank you so much.